here's a recent reads video kind of also following on from the August update uh, TBR haul currently reading video I did. I don't think I'm going to talk about everything with the same length because some things I don't care as much about I guess. I thought I would say that like I finished Evelina by Frances Burney and it was okay. I am glad I read it because it was interesting in the context of like literary history but it definitely wasn't like one of my favourite books or anything. And I did also finish, actually before I finished Evelina I think I finished The Shepherd's Crown by Terry Pratchett, which I did have some conflicted feelings about because it's just definitely not as good as the other books in the series. Um, but I couldn't quite bear to give Tiffany Aching three stars. And I did enjoy it and it was very emotional and I'm really excited to read more of the Witches series now. The next thing I finished was The Mystery of the Clockwork Sparrow by Catherine Woodfine which um, is a children's mystery book series set in Edwardian London and I think it's terrible really. <laughs> It's like so obsessed with like the aesthetic of like Edwardian stuff and also the Empire that it's like so empty or at least it like depoliticizes what those aesthetics mean. It's just like really weird and like kind of uncomfortable and I did not like it at all. But at the same time I might pick up the next in the series. And I think that's more because reading like kid series at the moment I think is quite like comforting and um, a nice kind of a nice kind of continuity and I read this first book now and I, I like the characters and stuff it's just yeah it's it's not very good and especially it's really it pales so much in comparison to another book that I read which is the first in a children's like murder mystery series so I guess it is kind of ironic that I really love the cover because that's kind of the, the main problem of the book like it's just all image and no substance so yeah the next thing I read was Girl Woman Other by Bernadine Everese and I read it in like two days because I just like flew through it and I loved it so much it's so like enthralling and generous and alive and like it's something that I thought I would enjoy since I first heard about it because the title is so good like girl woman other like yeah it tells the story of 11 black women and girls and one non-binary black person in like these chapter segments where like three are kind of co correlated to each other in some way but then also they're all kind of interlinked too and I really liked that format and I think that's partially why it's, it was so easy to like be immersed in because you're you're dipped into people's lives and you get to kind of explore them through different people's perspectives as well whilst also learning about other people too and I thought it was really impressive how like the prose wasn't particularly like verbose or excessive but there was still such like a vivid picture of the characters painted through it. I definitely think like if you don't like the way this is written then you'll probably not enjoy it very much but I I did and I think there are so many ways to write well and this is one of the ways to do that. Yeah in terms of like the content it is this like love letter to black womanhood basically and to black British womanhood um, which is really wonderful. My main qualm really is that like the representation of the non-binary character and the exploration of non-binary identity I thought was like really just badly done and wasn't particularly thought through and wasn't particularly sensitive and I feel like especially the way that there was this like trans woman character represented within the chapter like it didn't feel very it didn't feel very like genuine or careful and yeah so I didn't like that but otherwise I really liked it. So I also really liked this as like a piece of literary criticism too and like critiquing the canon slash even just like the novel form itself as a something that like re-entrenches whiteness as a, a collective experience and this works against that and demonstrates like black womanhood as like a collective unifying different mediated and tempered experience for many people in the world and I just yeah I really enjoyed that and the other things I wanted to say is I love there's a, a quite a big focus on like the love between and the difficult relationships and like complicatedness between mothers and daughters in this which I really love and also it's just like extremely gay in parts and there are so many hot dykes in it and like that's wonderful I loved it so much I think especially Amma maybe because we like start with her narrative and we kind of also end a little bit with her as well and Amma is like putting on this play called The Last Amazon of Dahomey and I kind of just wish that I could see the play and like enjoy it too <laughs> I am kind of sad that it didn't win the Women's Prize for Fiction I think it would have been nice if like Bernadine Everista could have like won a prize without having to share. Those are some thoughts on that, I hope that all made sense. The next book I read was like completely off kilter, um, 
<laughs> and that's Poetry, Conspiracy and Radicalism in Sheffield, which is c kind of like literary criticism and also poetry. And it collects 10, I think, poems from the radical 18th century newspaper, the Sheffield Register, and it also has like commentaries and kind of like a brief biography of the editor, I think, and some appendixes of like, appendices of like letters and things like that to kind of paint a picture of what like radical politics and uh, print looked like in Sheffield in the 1790s basically. I think 1793 is like the po where the poems start. Uh, I just thought it was really interesting. It just like, um, I found out about it because I was like watching videos about 18th century literature, partially because I had read Evan Liner I think, and I saw this like academic speak and I thought it was kind of interesting and like I lived near Sheffield for a while even though I actually never visited. And yeah, I, I actually, I really like it because it was like five pounds and it has like all you need really in it to understand it. Like obviously if you, no other stuff that's useful too but like yeah I thought as like what form literary criticism should take I really liked this and I thought it was really cool and interesting. The next thing I read was also like not included in that first list but that's Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens and this is a murder mystery and it's set in the 1930s in a school called Deep Dean and the characters are like 12 or 13 or something and it's written by Hazel Wong who's the secretary of the detective society at the school. This is the first in a series there's like 10 books nine books or something. It starts with Hazel Wong discovering the body of her teacher Miss Bell dead in the gym um, on the gym floor and it's about discovering the murder. And I just really enjoyed it. I think it's really well done. Um, it has enough like um, suspense and like kind of fearfulness for me because I'm a scaredy cat so like reading kids like scary books is, is actually good. Like that's the level of scariness I can deal with generally. <laughs> and I really liked how the characters were developed. I really liked Hazel and her voice and just like learning about her. And I really, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I think it's like, I'm really excited to keep reading the series and um, I really like the setting. So I'm excited to just keep reading the series and uh, yeah, it just, it was just so nice. Oh, and the kind of, the way that the mystery itself is uncovered and formulated, I thought was like well done. You know, it wasn't like extremely difficult to guess who had done stuff, but it was also like, not easy enough to, for it to feel like really boring and obviously like if you were a child reading it I think you would find it like really good in how that was carried through. You can actually see the second one is right here and the audiobook from the library just came through today so I'm going to listen to that probably soon. The other book that I read recently was Lote by Shola von Reinhold which I loved so much. I feel like the, the main character of of like Matilda. She is the patron saint of like malingerers and it's this beautiful like saintly camp exploration of modernism and maybe like also Afro-Scottish identity to some extent and uh, black queerness and aesthetics and beauty and luxury as well and pleasure too. Just like sent the, the, the embodied experience of pleasure and it's just so beautifully done. I think this is one of my favourite books, maybe of all time at this point. It tells the story of Matilda who's kind of like obsessed with various modernists, um, particularly Stephen Tennant who was like a bright young thing of the 1920s um, and like an aristocrat and a queer uh, effeminate pansy. And this book then kind of works as an ode to pansy kind and that's just lovely. Yeah, and then it's just about Matilda kind of coming to search and find connection and learn about this particular black modernist forgotten poet, um, Hermia Druitt. And so we get sort of research and archives and artist residencies. Yeah, and I think this is also like a really interesting book about the archives and also kind of about the literary canon as well, I guess. And the archive as both this like vibrant and, and fertile space and also this like stultifying claustrophobic trap. Yeah I think that's really cool and uh, just like ugh, it was just so good. I found it really hard to sleep after I'd finished it because I was just like thinking about it all the time. It kind of just like dazzled me. It was like it shone a light through my whole body and it sparkled and ugh, it's just so good. I really would recommend it. At the same time though, I do think that it's written in a particular way that some people would find really annoying and maybe pretentious, but like, 
I don't think it is pretentious. Just, I just loved it. It's beautifully written. That's the last book I finished most recently, I think. Um, I'm still working my throat way through Wolf Hall. I've, I think I've read like 65% now. So I'm getting there, but I mean, there's still hours left, but I'm getting there. And I am really, really enjoying it. Like I just feel so transported whenever I listen. I also started reading or listening to Sabriel by Garth Nix, which is also a, well, I guess it's maybe young adult and not children's. I'm not quite sure. My brother read it when we were younger, but I never did. Um, but I kind of always wanted to, but it was because he read it, so I couldn't. But yeah, Sabriel, and it's about this girl whose father is Ab Horson, which is a necromancer. But he doesn't call people up from the dead, he puts them back to sleep and tries to kind of maintain balance in that way and also safety. And it's about Sabriel, who's his daughter. Um, and like her adventures. Yeah, and I'm really enjoying it. I think it's actually really beautifully written and I'm listening to that on audiobook for, through the library as well, which is great. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think I also, I think I also might start Arsenic for Tea, which is the second in the Murder Most Unladylike series today or tomorrow probably too. And I do also have some plans to join in with the Femme Fantale readathon, which starts on the 27th of September, I think. Cool, I think that's everything I wanted to say. I hope you have a great day slash whatever you're watching this. Yeah, okay. Bye!